I'm primarily working with painting and needlework, tapestry um, and fabrics and bringing those into painting, into the realm of painting. Trying to bring all of these analogue, mechanical and digital processes together and to look at the past through the present. The hand is really pertinent to the research. I'm really interested in like, whether these skills become lost, which they undoubtedly will. I wonder why this happens again in a time of technological change when we've got AI. Um, we've also got maybe a fear of the technology that we've created and a longing for the past. So they're extremely layered and quite full. Often there's a little bit too much going on in a way and that's why when I start to sort of break them down and fragment them and unpaint in a way or unmake what's going on. So I'm focused on the convergence of hand processes, mechanical processes as screen printing uh, and some sewing machine kind of work and digital processes through 3D scanning and uh, digital collages using Photoshop. So all kind of actually quite lo-fi digital processes. I was asked to go and do a week's residency at Modern Art Oxford. It was a show called Love Is Enough, curated by Jeremy Della. It showcased William Morris and Andy Warhol, and I was making these large fabric hangings, which were the beginnings of these kind of large assemblages using the actual fabric. From that point onwards, I've been explicitly using craft materials in my practice and that's taken me to where I am now as a PhD researcher and looking at specifically the value, the relevance of the hand in a digital age or a post-digital age. When we find ourselves again in this fourth industrial revolution in a time of accelerating technology, and the technology is moving so rapidly and we, at the same time as moving rapidly, are slowing down. I have a real interest in craft and that's from growing up in a household where my mum was very much into interior design and decoration and, and craft. So she grew up in Cyprus. She went to a convent school where all the girls would do needlework and tapestry. And so this was all around the house. Ornament, curlicues, thick, heavy velvet curtains and pattern everywhere. I think this displacement of pattern and image is really the beginnings of where I started to kind of make my own assemblages or collages in a way. And that really shapes my practice now. And then I just started to actually use the fabrics that she'd left and all of the offcuts of her own projects making curtains because she made all of her own stuff. So that started to become part of my practice. I used those a while ago to kind of translate them into painting and into the grid and they started to kind of have other references like early video games or even mosaic kind of references. The research that I'm working on basically feeds all of the practice, so it's practice-based research. Looking and working in collaboration with the William Morris Gallery. William Morris was a designer, a socialist, a poet, a writer, he was a polymath basically. Most known for his designs of furnishings for the home. He was influenced by the natural world and medievalism mostly. What I'm most interested in with Morris is he is a contradictory character and he was constantly looking back to the past. The way that people lived, but also how people made things. That's specifically what I'm focused on. So he was really about traditional 
processes, natural dyeing processes and very much against the Industrial Revolution and mass production and so very much against his own time. And I believe we're at that time now again, a temporary time that we're living in because we go back to the past so much and that's what Morris did. So these very utopian ideas. And so I'm really interested in that shifting of times, which is what I do in my work. The point of the research is to try and bring Morris into the 21st century. Time is the central kind of idea and that notion of atemporality or also polytemporality. There's a constant looking back. I'm quite interested in sloppy craft in a way, as I am with sort of undoing an image, the kind of destruction of an image in a way. But there's also this conceptual interest in weaving, which refers and comes from the grid, obviously the warp and the weft, and that relating to the notion of the pixel. There's always been an interest with the pixel throughout the ages. I've been using a hand loom and have made some really artificially coloured hangings which aim to, to look at the, the, the digital realm again through a traditional process. Um, so that's what those pieces are doing. And I've also been using a digital jacquard loom to, to make some black and white woven cloth. I've been specifically choosing fragments from the Kelmscott Chaucer, my own copy of it. So it's a, a, um, a woven reproduction of a reproduction of a print. And so this, again, this sort of meta process um, really interests me. And this was a fascinating book. And this was one of the books that I remember looking at as a child. This density of line and pattern um, I'm just fascinated by it. and I think that's really shaped my own love for the sort of jarring of many different um, images, pattern, uh, text, etc. The weaving started off as being an interest again with traditional processes, that relation between past and the present or um, the pixel and programming and the zeros and ones of a computer program does derive from the punch card system that was used in jacquard weaving. The punch card would determine where the pattern, where the, where the actual threads are going to be woven. It's really, um, it's about the zeros and ones. And I'm replicating um, things, that, uh, processes that Morris used obviously not replicating in the way that he used them. I'm using them in a 21st century way, using digital weaving as well. Um, but it, yeah, it, it's, it stemmed from a kind of obsession with the grid and, and with wanting to go back to a process that I didn't have and the hand. I've always used the archives in my work. Everything is an appropriated image, pretty much, apart from the painting, um, the gestural kind of painting. Otherwise, everything comes from books that I collect, illustration books or how-to kind of diagrams of things. So infographics, basically. Huge interest in that. And also craft books and patterns, old magazines. And there's also the kind of digital archive. And those are collected images quite often from news sites. And within the past seven-ish years, I've been focusing on natural disasters and using images of ruins. Partly as a metaphor for painting itself and the notion of breaking down the image. Fragmentation is, is a huge method in my work. I started 3D scanning. Um, firstly, my mum's, my late mum's fabrics. She left loads of tablecloths and things that she collected. 
In order to 3D scan something, there needs to be an object. It can't just be flat. And so I, I'd heap together these fabrics, kind of pile them into a mound and start scanning around. Rather than wanting to print out an object, which is the whole point of the 3D scan, I'm more interested in uh, the flat image again. And it started to produce this weird kind of like um, grid, a new network, more of a network, or like a rhizome. And it started to talk then about the folds of the fabric in a new structure. 3D scan, screen printed of a fold. So there's the digital reading of an old um, antique artifact taken through screen printing as well. So there's a mechanical hand, a digital hand, and the actual hand. And that's what I'm really interested in. That led on to folding these calendars. These are the calendar paintings, obviously referencing time. I was using the calendars to think about looking at Morris in a new way. And I was certainly breaking down the image in order to kind of keep it just between abstraction and representation, so just about legible. And so I started scrunching up these old calendar pages and scanning them on the photocopier. Parts of the image are in focus and parts of the image are out of focus because they don't sit flatly on the scanner. And so, of course, you've got the front of the calendar, you've got the actual pattern, and on the back of the calendar you have the, the dates, of course, and little snippets of text that just give a hint as to the focus of the work, really, the hand and, uh, and craft, and yet being seen through this digital print of the fold. And the fold is really only done by hand, and yet the digital print of the folded paper is way more effective in that kind of photographic representation. And then on top of those, I start screen printing snippets, little details of my mum's old tablecloths, like the crochet or the, the embroidery uh, and details around the edges of things, and enlarging those. So there's a real play with scale and layers and translucency. I want things to be fragmented in the work, conveying a sense of, of the world and the notion of things falling apart. And also relates to the ancient Greek and Roman sculptures that I'm a bit obsessed with, with drapery. Something fluid and really amazingly crafted in stone. Something so soft and, and flowing in, in, in stone. There is a lot of paradox that goes on with my work. Arts and crafts, order and disorder, high and low, fast and slow. There's like everything, all of the opposites going on. And that's what I love. I really love bringing together those things. And so it's about the convergence of things and breaking down those hierarchies.